Thanks a lot. Um, so uh, my name is uh, Simon Champier. Um, I'm a software engineer and I'm based in Heidelberg, Germany. Um, I have been involved with the GNOME community for quite a while. So before, I've been working on the Sugar Learning Environment. So um, for one laptop per child and, um, and Sugar Labs. So Sugar um, is um, using as well the GNOME platform and, and has um, then like a, um, a, central, um, a specific UI for um, teaching um, learners. Um, so um, nowadays I'm working for Endless, so the company behind the um, Endless OS. Um, Endless OS is as well using the GNOME platform, but um, different to Sugar, um, it's not um, creating um, its own shell, it's using GNOME shell and um, does some customization to, to it. Um, the application in the um, Endless OS, they are packaged, deployed and run using Flatpak. And um, Endless um, is an early adopter of the technology as you have been um, seeing in previous talks, um, um, Endless is, is quite on, on, on the leading edge of that one. Um, and today I'm very delighted um, to show you a feature we have developed um, that is hi um, highly um, making use of um, how um, Flatpak um, applications are architected. And I call it um, seamless integration to hack desktop applications. Um, first of all, I would like to put um, some background um, where that feature is coming from. So, Coding is the language of the future. Let's repeat that. Um, coding is the language of the future. So that doesn't mean that we as humans, we will um, start um, to talk to each other using um, like a, c a coding language. It more means that um, understanding and mastering uh, a programming language is an important skill to have. That is so because um, in, in the future, and even nowadays, um, um, computers continue to play a, a large role in our everyday life. So we use in our everyday life, they are present everywhere, so um, it's good to get a good understanding um, what they are doing. And um, it's, very, it's very important um, to ensure that um, the, um, that the future digital natives will not just be consuming like um, digital content, they will create it, they will uh, adopt it, um, and, they will, um, and uh, they will take the responsibility. Um, there is a huge demand from parents um, on finding um, ways of like uh, um, courses to teach in computer science and as well to, uh, to teach computer science. So they are already see the need for their children to keep up with the, with the life of today. Mm. Also, um, companies are looking for highly skilled um, engineers nowadays, so there's a big gap in the, in the demand of, um, of, of jobs um, and actually the engineers available to fill those roles. There are quite some initiatives out there already. Code Academy is one of those as well um, in Britain since 2014. Um, there, there is a nationwide program that starts to teach like children starting from the age of five. Um, I don't know how successful that is, but at least um, there, there, there is the, um, yeah, th there is an understanding that this is an important thing to do. Um, as well recently I found out that there is even for refugees like a, like a school in, um, uh, in, in Great Britain um, that helps them um, with coding to find um, um, jobs on, the, on that market. Um, so there, there seem to be already some understanding of, of the need for it. Um, often what, is, um, what you find out there is based on web technologies, HTML, um, JavaScript, um, so at Endless we thought we would take it to the next level and actually allow as well to, um, to hack 
more on like the appli applications you're using in your daily life um, and as well then to be able to deep dive. So the feature I'm presenting today um, is called Code View. So basically Code View lets you peek under the hood. So um, it's, it allows you to reveal the source code of the application um, in a very easy way. It allows you to modify it and to run it. And um, it's also called behind the scene, and I will show you in a moment why that's the case. Okay. So. I'm wondering if that is accurate, <laughs> <laughs> but given the weather conditions today, it might be. Well, yeah, actually, actually, I hacked it. You know, there's a there's a constant always saying rain. Um, so this is um, GNOME weather. Like that's a typical um, um, GNOME application. Um, the only thing that's um, Oh, yeah, and, and this is, um, it has been packaged as a flat pack and it's running as a flat pack as well. So there's an additional thing to it, and you see at the right bottom, there's, there's a little button which is drawn on top of the application window. And if we click that one, it is looking behind the scene, and what we are seeing now is GNOME Builder. So, um, so basically, you have two, uh, two applications, two application windows, um, but, they, but they appear as, as one application. It's, it's more basically like two views. So, um, and GNOME Builder has been started now with the source code of the application. Um, so what you see here, so for example, that one is City of Jazz. So what we can do now is we can actually make changes. Um, let me do a simple change. So so you have been seeing um, we have here like the um, uh, temperature um, information for the GNOME Weather app, and we could change that to um, get the wind information. Wind 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 information. Save it, and then um, and then we can actually as well compile it um, and run it. So using the run button up here. So and now in the background, it's using Flatpak again um, to just recompile it. So and we see here we have a new version and we have that simple change up here. So quite straightforward, right? <laughs> so let me show you what, what happened um, while we were doing that one. Um, OK, I made a, a, an, a graph uh, to illustrate a bit. So. We have three components involved here. So one is the US shell, which, which I said is basically the GNOME shell with a few customizations. Then we have uh, GNOME Builder, which is our editor. And then we have underneath all that, there's Flatpak. And Flatpak is, is there for doing all of the packaging of the, of the application, um, defining all of uh, the dependencies. Um, the application is deployed using Flatpak. So um, on, the, on the EOS shell side of things, we do draw that li little button down there. And then in, in the shell as well, we keep track of those two windows, which we have, um, because we always need to keep the association of the, of the application window and the builder window. So when we um, you know, um, change the size or when we um, move the position, um, all of that, or you know, the user would um, does close one of those um, windows, so 
to um, always keep like a useful state for the user. Then we have the animation as well in there, so for the um, rotation of those two windows. Um, w what happens as well, when the user is clicking the button, we do actually um, locate the Flatpak manifest, um, which is associated with the app. So, um, so there are two places to look, so system-wide installation or, or like the user installation. And um, so we use that Flatpak and then we launch GNOME Builder and we pass over that, that, um, that information and, um, and launch GNOME Builder with it. And we also keep track of the sessions. So, we have so you can have several sessions um, open. So for example, one for GNOME Builder, another one for gedit, whatnot. Mm. And then on um, the on the GNOME Builder side of things, so GNOME uh, Builder um, to be able to start up um, its its workbench, it needs uh, to have um, the sources um, of, of of a project ready uh, for him to create the workbench. So what we are doing is um, there is the creator functionality in um, in, in GNOME Builder. So normally when you open up GNOME Builder, you would see like a, like a, a creator page which lets you dis decide um, which project you, wa you, you want to open or um, if you want to create a new one. And we create as well a creator page. And that one is basically just taking then um, in the background um, that manifest file and is doing the download of the sources. And then you have, have a little bar which is indicating the progress. So it went quite fast here because um, I do have the sources all, all already um, on, my, on my machine because I didn't want to rely on um, internet connectivity or anything like that. Um, and then um, we have Flatpak here to actually, so um, GNOME Builder has the Flatpak plugin and the plugin then is, is there to, um, uh, to, to do all the things like building again the, um, the application and as well, so um, building the dependencies. Um, at that moment as well, it would download additional dependencies needed um, to uh, build the application. So um, Alex was mentioning um, earlier in the talk, so um, there, there is a new feature in um, Flatpak called uh, bundling of sources. So we, we worked on that one. And um, so, so you could, for example, um, preload your device with several sources already for like applications you know, um, like a user would would like to um, hack on. So um, you can precede then Flatpak, so it can find those um, sources already. So you don't. So actually, that would work as well um, in cases. Um, um, which we are interested in in endless if there is um, asynchronous internet. So it's, it's not always available or it's expensive or whatnot, so you can have those sources already there. Mm. User anti exchange design. So maybe I show again the that one here. Okay, so as I said, we have that overlay button here, um, which is um, really, um, it's another clutter actor, which is then um, drawn on top of that uh, window. So we have special cased it um, because um, um, to be able to receive events on it. And um, what we do for the animation is that we, um, that we just rotate those two windows by 180 degrees and we have, um, we have the back face culling um, turned on so that we, um, while we do rotate, we don't have any artifacts. And that, that button here is rotated um, um, by the center of, of the window itself. So it's using deprecated API to be able to use a point for the, for the animation which is outside of the actor itself. And, um, what we do here, so so it's so the so the asso association of the windows is similar, if, like if you would have um, with um, 
um, if you have an application where you have several windows open, for example, if you have several um, browser windows open, they would uh, um, uh, show up similarly. So you, so you can as well switch here be between those two views. Same is to Alt-Tab, um, where you see those two windows. Um, but animation window, animation. Right, so we have another thing. Um, so this feature alone in itself is usable. You can, you can as well even use it um, with, with, without the parts we, we have added to the, to the shell. So you can use a GNOME Builder directly and load, load a Flatpak manifest there. Mm, we have as well integrated it with something that we call um, a, a chat box. So Chatbox um, is an interface to be able to have um, several lessons um, and to guide the lesson, uh, to guide the user um, through the lessons um, by, um, by an instructor, let's say. So, um, so you see here there are, there are a few lessons um, lined up. So one, one is code view. Um, so Ada is the, uh, narrator that is um, guiding you through the lesson. So um, uh, he, she's saying, "All right, let's look for the weather app on your on your desktop. Launch it." So we have it already launched, and then um, she keeps on telling, "Okay, um, now um, have a look. Um, where's where's the button to um, to flip over and?" You say, okay, I've done that one. And, and she's, she, at a later stage, she will as well um, asking questions where you have to find answers to. Um, so um, it gets then even more um, interactive. So you can integrate that feature in a, you know, in a, um, in a much uh, bigger um, environment for learning. Um, which we have done here with, uh, with the chat box. So there's as well, um, we have been working on um, interaction between like the chat box and, um, and the, uh, and the uh, application so that you get notification going back and forth when, when the application um, has been launched, if the button has been switched. Um, yeah, I mean, you can do that to a certain extent. After a while it gets hairy because you're, have to assume a lot of things, but there's some refinements you can you can make to to to, to give, give you a, even a better feeling that those um, things belong together. And then um, yeah, there are other lessons like uh, processing, uh, Python, and all of that. So, um, with such a feature, um, we choose um, we, we achieve basically two things. So, one thing um, I often um, comes to my mind is like low floor, no no ceiling. So, this really gives the ability um, to yeah peek under the hood to to really um, deep dive to um, to really um, appropriate the the tools you are using because you know how, how they are functioning and um, so it it is really dependent on your um, on your thirst of knowledge or, or how, how skilled you are um, or how, how much interested you are to dig even even deeper so there are no barriers but but there are you know um, low level entry points so I mean like even even someone who who wouldn't know anything about compilers or even maybe programming language languages? He, he would he would be able to start it and flip the screen and look around. Oh, there's some code behind it, and maybe he would run it and 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 maybe with the chat box he would be able to you know make his first little changes in a in a like in a in an environment which is uh, still you know, uh, safe, safe for him, safe to make any changes. So, so there, 
so there could nothing really bad happen. But still, um, it's not too sandboxed in a, in a, in a sense that you, that you cannot explore. So I think there are two different things. So on the one hand, you want it to be safe, that you cannot break your environment. On the other hand, you want the person to be able to as well, you know, do things not just, you know, in an, in an, in an example which has no meaning outside of his example. So you, so, so, so you want the users as well to be able to um, deep dive. And uh, for a, a developer, um, so it's, it's, it's easy to start um, developing on um, complex applications. I mean, um, if, you, um, if you would start using change build or things like that, so it's, 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 it's much harder to, um, to start doing that and, you know, have to figure out like, th th like dependencies and things like that. I mean, all of that is really due um, to um, technologies like fl Flatpak. So um, such technologies m make it really, really easy to do something like that. I mean, this, this feature really sits, you know, on the shoulders of giants. I mean, there are those underlying technologies like Flatpak and, I mean, like GNOME, GNOME Builder. And it's just basically, you know, connecting the dots and uh, building s um, something on top of that. And, um, yeah, and I think it's as well, to some extent, giving um, those features, you know, some visibility. Because, you know, often, you know, Flatpak, I mean, it's something developers are interested in someone who is who wants to de um, deploy um, his application and um, distros but but this is something where where it really bubbles up to the user space and it gets visible what is what is really um, um, working under the hood so um, as I said um, on the shoulders of giants so there's there's really, um, th there have been a lot of people at Endless involved um, into this design-wise, uh, code-wise. As you have seen, like the chat box, there's, there's an uh, amazing coder sitting somewhere in Australia, um, hacking up a lot of those things. Um, we um, have the GNOME Builder community. So uh, Christian was very helpful um, in getting those uh, changes um, in there needed, like the, like the creator page. Um, the Flatpak community, like with um, Alex, uh, it was really straightforward um, to um, get in the features we needed, like the um, bundling of sources, and, and as well like the GNOME community. I'm very thankful uh, today to have the ability to speak here and present you those, those um, fruits of our work from the last months. And I think there's quite some potential, probably, um, what what you guys can do if you have any more ideas how that can be used how that can be even more extended i think that's what i would um leave the discussion open for thanks don't be shy So is this strongly tied to GNOME Builder, or could we use this to display other ways of modifying whatever they're doing? So like if they're looking at an image in um, an image viewer, when it flips around, instead of seeing the code for the image viewer, could it show like GIMP with that image opened in it? At the moment, I mean, like, like if, you, if you want to edit like the source code, it's, it's uh, tied to GNOME Builder because we have all that. Um, uh, I mean, you could um, hook it up to other applications and launching it and having the same visual effect. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. And I had a second question sure. if nobody else has one yet. Um, when you make a change to the code for the application, does that mm -hmm. replace the, the binary in the flat pack or does it live somewhere else and is it persistent if it lives somewhere else? So what it, um, so uh, at the moment um, we are using the system installation of that application and then when you make the change it's going into the user, um, user space. Okay. So, um, so you, so you cr uh, do create a copy and, um, and then um, it's persistent. Um, so, so what we did not do yet is that you then um, 
so the next step is to actually create as well a launcher on the uh, on your desktop so that you can then both run so so you can run um, the modified one and and your existing one okay so that's that's a last little detail so and then making maybe the um, the application icon with some small indicator that is the one you have modified and giving it another name so okay thank you Hi, I think the flip view is really cool, but uh, to edit the code, wouldn't it be much more comfortable to use builders side by the application? I, side by side on the same desktop, so I, c I can write code and see uh, instantly the modification without clicking button or have additional uh, clutter or something. Well. So I mean, like for things like those more complex applications, I mean, you you need to compile them again, or like uh, at least re recreate the flat pack. So I guess, and then and then it depends on you know the um, the available width that you have. So normally, I think already when you when you look the um, the width that you have available in. Uh, so, so for me, this is all, this is quite already quite constrained for like source code. So, I mean, you would maybe need to scale down the application or something like that. But I don't know if it's. I think I mean it's it's quite straightforward to uh, to change the view. But I mean that's not the altered view. So you create a new window. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's actually the side by side, I would say, right? Uh, the well, yeah, that's true. So, th so that's so that's a new window you create. So if you if you actually have like a, another monitor, you could move the window over. Ah, okay. Right. So, so. Th so th I did not acknowledge that. Uh, let's. Yeah, actually, that that one. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Cool. Cool yeah, <laughs> thanks. <coughs> Pardon? What happens when you click the step on the <laughs> 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 It will actually do the same thing. So um, it will actually, <coughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but but I think that um, that is just. I would remove that button for the for the new one. I think that's it has no sense. So it's it's just a leftover from from the underlying code that detects like in the shell like the windows. So so what we have done here at the moment is like so we have a white list of applications in in our shell code that we have that feature en enabled for. And when when the shell detects that there is a new window up starting, it just decides okay um, that has um, the um, uh, the application name we are interested in, and then it draws the button on it. So one thing, um, of course, having that overlay button is, on the one hand, it's nice. You know, you can do um, a lot of tweaks as well design-wise. I mean, like, we, we had ideas of having, like, a, um, a hot edge or hot corner where it would just, you know, fade in when you hover over it. But in the end, I mean, one could have as well like a button just in the um, just in the toolbar of the of the application but that's i mean that works when you have like an um, yeah w w when your applications are all of the same um, style and using the same toolbar then you can do something like that for example in in sugar we we had a similar feature and we had like one toolkit for for all the applications and so it was just one part of the toolkit so i mean like uh, for I mean, for GNOME, it uh, could make sense as well um, to have that, have that feature, because you know it's it's a bit you you have to add quite some um, code that deals with okay now now I'm moving that window so I have repositioned that button and stuff like that so it's it's some kind of hack as well to some extent, but yeah, I. D I like. I mean, I mean, I like the visual effect of having something drawn on top of the window. That that, that I do like. I must admit. Cool. Yes, please. 
I uh, I think the technology is is quite good. I think it's uh, it's well in line with also with what, what Christian said that we should try to increase the percentage of people actually hacking stuff from mm -hmm. one to three percent or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's good. I'm just wondering whether it could make sense to to make it more interactive even so that you could I don't know in the UI itself click something change this string or so if, if you you know notice a, mm -hmm. a, a, a translation that doesn't make much sense or if you I don't know don't like the action that a button performs whether whether it will make sense to sort of I don't know how but sort of poke through the from the code to the UI and, and then back so like that you like can edit web, this like in the web. Yeah. Maybe like in the web, yes. The web that, yeah, it the idea of the web that never sort of materialized, unfortunately. Something like yeah, that. that's that's very nice. So as well, even so, I think there are, there are a lot of uh, things that can be improved al already as well. So when you open it, that you have a default um, uh, file already opened in builders, things like that. And then as well, what what I would be interested in? Okay, I made now a change, and I want to contribute that upstream, yeah. mm -hmm. having having that really, really easy. So, okay, I just see my diff there, and you know, I can create a patch. I, I know where it's going to. So I think those would be the, the next steps to you know, get really contributors and having it as well used by developers, I think. Yeah? I have a question. Sure. Um, so <laughs> uh, I'm interested in the sort of social dynamics of this. So mm -hmm. if, how do you, correlate the contribution. So once once you decide you want to do a flip and you ha now you have a new flat pack with the changes. So how do you how does that get anywhere, anywhere right? Right. Are, are you are, I guess the model is are you sharing or is the model supposed to be sharing with other people within mm -hmm. the the community or is it uh are you're doing a sort of a defining from a single single uh upstream type of thing? So it's 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 either disconnected or or decentralized or centralized. I guess is sort of. Yeah. So so I think definitely that um, sharing is um, something that um, uh, that is a very important next step as well for this one here. So so first of all, yeah, sharing like like the changes I do like in a patch with the community with upstream maintainer, but as well if I if I then take uh, an application and I say, okay, I think it's much better if that application has that feature, that feature, and, and, I, and I cannot figure out something with upstream, so to, to upstream those features, that I create my own version and then I uploaded it to, to another place. Or, or I, probably it's not even always like sharing with, with all of the world, you want to share it with your friends. If you, if you have a young, young learner, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, 12 years old, he just wants to, to, to hack it and then being proud of and share it with his um, right. friends in school. So they, so they don't need like um, infrastructure to share it worldwide. They, they might even want to share it, you know, from his computer to, the, to, to, to just the other computer. So, so you could do that with Flatpak as well if you, do, um, if you, if you use an installable Flatpak so that you create that one and then you put it either on a USB stick or you have in the operating system, some sort of sharing functionality that we. I mean, yeah. it sounds like when in, instead of that flip, right? When you build, right. you can have a share button there. Uh, you know, you ha you have. Sure. When when you build the application and then the thing comes up, you, you have a flip. You could say right, share. Right. Right. You can right. use that as a UI to move around and yeah. do the share instead. Yeah. Even even if if it would just be for storing as a you know installable flat pack, it would store it and then y you would take that and. Give it to right. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, just a quick one, Mosley. Um, in regards to these apps that you've put this kind of thing on, what kind of apps are actually working with that at the moment? Is it just no maps? Is it flat pack apps? What's it's flat? Could pack it could apps. it potentially so be anything? <laughs> yeah, at the, at the moment, like. Um, like it's flat pack as because um, we are just you know um, passing over the flat pack and then you, there's all the information dependencies that we need, need to know for, for building. So the moment we are relying on flat pack, we are open to all all the new. Um, but like, uh, like other apps that are in flat packs that aren't necessarily no maps. Well, well, does it work at the moment or is it? Yeah, it depends. It, it depends what you know. Um, um, they they should work. 
um, um, you know, the moment they, you know, they are um, having the um, the runtime, they they are able to work with the Clone runtime, um, and um, so it depends then as well how how much sense there is to hack on those. For example, if you have like one of those flat pack wrapper applications for Skype or something like that, I mean, you probably wouldn't. You, you would just see those wrapping scripts, so um, you couldn't do much more hacking on it. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, anything? Yes, please. Just curious, what does happen when you Everything will explode. <laughs> no, actually, so. Um, um, we had a major rewrite of, of um, well, we were actually getting aligned with the upstream shell and um, I made all, all of my de development on our old shell and I just recently updated and I figured that out. So, so see, that's another side effect of having this floating button. <laughs> so it basically, you know, it uh, didn't detect that. Um, so I, I have to add now code that detects, okay, when, whenever I've got the um, screen saver going on to then hide as well. So, so because it's, 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 it's really one of those, um, so when, when I create the button, I add it to the, so in, in the shell there is something called add, add Chrome, where you actually say, okay, now be, you know, a primary uh, source for receiving events, and that's why it's drawn on top. Yeah, our old version of the shell, uh, our old fork, fork of the shell uh, didn't have uh, the screen shield. Uh, so we never had to detect that. Uh, now that we updated it, right. there is. So yeah, <laughs> have to remove it. <laughs> we will remove the screen shield. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, please. It's great to have a bit of time for discussion. I don't know if you thought about it, but one cool thing to get to know how the interface is working. Uh, in addition to see the code, is to be able to launch the GTK inspector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. We could f fit that in there as well. <laughs> there was another question somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Constant is flipping. Yes, please. Uh, I didn't catch if this functionality is available only on endless OS and if it's implemented as a shell functionality or if it can be enabled in other distributions that have GNOME. Or so, so you can use it in GNOME Builder. So the, so the, so the bit to pass like a um, manifest, a flatback manifest to GNOME Builder, that's in GNOME Builder. So, and then what sits on top of that is like that Shell, shell part that is uh, doing the animation and you know hiding or not hiding that, that, that small little button when, when it's necessary. So it is available for, for other things, right? Pardon? It is available for other distributions. I mean, I can install some things and have this functionality uh, up and running in, in Ubuntu or anything. Yeah, so, you, so um, those, those changes to the shell you, you w would have to uh, apply to your shell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to recompile yeah. the shell, okay. From the GNOME shell, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I mean, um, it's actually. Uh, yeah. I think. Okay. So if there if there is a general interest to you know to move this further um, for um, to have it you know as a as a real feature in in the GNOME shell itself, then I think you know one one would need to discuss it yeah. among a group. I mean. I think it would be a nice thing, and I, th I can really see that, you know, um, so this is a teaser, let's say, right? So this is a teaser, so what we did, and, and what we thought, okay, we bring it up for discussion, um, and, and then um, we can go from there and see what makes most sense um, upstream. Also, as, as a extension, it would be also, as an extension, it would be nice, as an extension, I don't know how. Yeah, as an extension, or I think even get trying to get it directly in the shell. Sure. <laughs> I've talked to I've, I've talked to at least one person from the release team that are interested in ha seeing this feature of stream. Maybe not as blingy, but more like right click on the launcher, edit 
this, the code of this application or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Like, I, I had a question about like how you're currently integrating this. Like, is that button always visible in every app, or do you have to enable developer mode, or like? No, well, we currently we have a whitelist for for applications that we say, okay, um, yeah, we know that it's working with, and yeah. that but but so like basically, regular people while using their everyday apps have that button there all the time. No, like is that the idea? No. No. Oh, well on the apps where it's enabled, like whenever I open the weather app, I have that button. Or do you have to well, do something um, for that? So, so, th so the so the bigger picture, w what we had was like the integration with the with the chat box, and actually, so th this is more like um, so. The idea from the beginning was um, to have some sort of like gaming. Um, so whenever you earn some points, at one point you would end up having having that button. So how how much advanced you are in your um, in your lessons, you would then at one point earn that button and then you would be able to. Have okay, it. so it, it's not like the user uses this for the first time, to clicks the button and it's like, what the fuck, where am yeah, I? Yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> right, okay. I mean, <laughs> if he would discover it and if he, uh, why not? <laughs> but yeah. Well, I could see I some get your point. confusion yeah. there. Um, but I think in general, I mean, like, if, it, if that feature would go upstream and if it would be something like a right click button yeah. or something like that. That sounds very cool. I think definitely yeah. it should then be for all the applications that yeah. that would be supported. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and as he mentioned, I think like integrating GDK Inspector in mm. some way would be super cool. Like yeah. maybe on in the right click menu you have both of those, or yeah. just like you have on the web. Yeah. I can definitely see that. Yeah. Cool. Did we have Anything else? One more question. Yeah. Okay. Wasn't Great. Cool. Thanks right. a lot. Kay.